In this tutorial, I want to cover the most common ways for you to reuse filters on Shotcut. To many advanced users, this may not be new, but it's always good to get a refresher. And for the beginners out there, hopefully this helps you be more efficient in your Shotcut video editing. So stay tuned. I'm just a normal person with no video editing background who wanted to start making YouTube videos and maybe cool transitions and effects. I don't really plan on being a professional video editor, so I was looking for a free, easy to learn video editing software. Luckily, I stumbled on Shotcut, a free open source video editing program that can do many of the tricks you can do on more enterprise video editors like Adobe Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, but with a much simpler and leaner interface, thus dramatically shortening the learning curve. It just takes using your imagination. So let's learn together. In this tutorial, we are using Shotcut version 21.05.18. Before I get started, I just wanted to thank everyone who's been with me on this journey so far in helping educate everyone on Shotcut tips and best practices. In my own little way, I want to thank you, so stay tuned until the end of this tutorial to see what that is. So, on to the tips. So you find yourself doing repetitive tasks of using the same filter settings over and over again. So you want to find ways of speeding up that process. So I'll give you a scenario. So I have here two video clips that I'm going to drag into the timeline. So this is the first one, and this is the second one. Now, in the first clip, while it's selected, I'm going to go into filters, and I'm going to use a very obvious filter, like color grading, so that you guys will know the effect of what the filter does to that particular clip. I just want to make it a lot more obvious. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the highlights all the way up, right? So that you see the effect on that particular clip. And so if I toggle it off, this was the original and this is the effect of the filter that I just applied. So regardless of what filter you apply, the basic way of copying a filter is usually going to this icon right here called copy the filters. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go into this second clip here and I'm going to select it and then I'm just going to click this thing here called paste filters. And what it does is it instantaneously applies all the filters that I copied from here to here. Now, what if you have about 20 clips on the same timeline? So basically you go to every single one of them and then you click this icon here. You basically paste, 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 paste until you get through every single one of those clips. Now, that's all well and good, but the problem is you need to make sure that you basically finalized the filter settings before you pasted it on all those other clips. Otherwise, you would need to go back and reapply or recopy and repaste any changes that you've just created to those clips. So, I want to show you other ways of utilizing copy pasting or reusing filters that may be less manual than what I just showed you. So the first way I showed you is just copying and pasting filters to a clip. The next way I'm going to show you is copying pasting into a track. Hopefully by this point you've watched enough of my tutorials to know that you shouldn't just edit linearly, meaning that you should place your clips on multiple tracks for greater control of your transitions. So right now what you're seeing is a timeline with just one track. And for all intents and purposes, you can actually create an entire timeline with just one track and you could just dump all your video clips and images all on the same track. But 
For greater control, what I would usually do is I would lay the clips on different tracks. So to get to a new track, all you have to do is right click the existing track, track operations, and add a video track if that's what you want to add is a video track. And you can go through the same process, again, right click track operations, if you want to add an audio track. So in this instance, we have two video tracks, right? And so right now, I only have the filter applied to this particular clip, as you can see here. And what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add another filter and again another obvious filter so that we know what the effects are after it's been applied so in this one here i'm going to add a gaussian blur and i'm going to just blur it all the way so that it's super blurred like that okay so in this track we have both color grading and gaussian blur applied and the second one we don't right and so typically if I wanted to apply it to this particular video, all I have to do is go to the original one and copy, which basically copies every filter that's on this little screen over here. So right now there's only two filters, so it copies both of them, and I can easily go into this particular uh, clip and then paste it, and again, it's applied to that one. But in this technique, we're not gonna do that. So let's pretend again that you have about a dozen clips on this particular track there. And let's you also have a dozen clips on this on the second track here. So let's paste it here. So let's say that's there. Let's copy this one. Let's go on this track here. Um, and let's say that's oop. let's select the track that I want to paste to right there okay so so now you have these sets of filters here as you can see there and we want to apply it to this clip here that clip there again no filters at this point and this clip oh, let's remove that one because that was a copied one um, to that clip there okay so what I can do is instead of applying the filter to the particular clip what I can do is I can copy it and then let's remove it from this clip here so that it now doesn't have a filter and what I can do is I can go into the track so I can select this area right here and I can apply a filter here, meaning that if I apply if I apply the filter to this track, it applies the filter to all the videos and photos on the entire track. So if I while I have that selected, again, I can go over here in the filters box and just click paste and what I did is I essentially applied the filter to every single video on this track. So you can see here, once again, it's the highlights are blown and then it's super blurred. But if I go into the particular clip right here and if I go into the filters, you can see there are no filters loaded because the filter is actually loaded on the track, right? And so now, by loading the filters here, I can instantaneously apply that filter to every video on this track. The same as this track right here. So right now on this track, we have no filters. And if we look at the video on these tracks, again, they're just at their default state. But if I select the track right here, and again, I click paste, it now applied all the filters to this entire track, which makes it a lot easier. And again, it's easier, it's easier to scale. So the benefit of applying a filter to the track is that if ever later on, after I applied the filter, I want to make an edit to the filter itself, 
I just need to go to the track setting and say I'm going to drop the Gaussian blur. It applies the changes to not only this video, it also applied it to this video. So again, it's kind of a master controller for me to be able to control all the filters of this one track. Now, what's the typical use case for me? Um, a lot of times when I'm recording something, uh, for example, my travel videos or my fishing videos, I usually bring two sets of cameras, right? I usually bring a GoPro and another camera called an Insta360 X2. So the problem with using two different cameras in two different points of view is that the cameras, though they're both good, they have different color settings. And so I need to find a way to universally apply filters to one camera or the other so that I can match the footage so that they look like they came from the same camera. So what I usually do is I put all the clips from my GoPro on this track and then all the clips from my Insta360 on this track. And so when I need to go back and make color grading or I need, you know, white balance, exposure adjustments, I could just make the adjustment on the track itself and it essentially makes the changes to all the footage that I've dumped here coming from the GoPro camera or the Insta360 and essentially just saved me a slew of time having to go back to each individual video and manually change it one by one. So that's the best use case for me and I'm sure you can find other use cases for yourself in terms of why you would create a universal filter setting or filter change to a group of videos in one track. And so again, use your real estate. You can add as many tracks as you want, meaning each track could represent a different camera if you happen to bring four cameras with you, again. Um, and you can apply the filter changes to that particular track instead of having to manually go back to each one of the videos. So that's the second way of being able to reuse your filters also somewhat copying and pasting, but instead copying and pasting into a track instead of the individual video. So you've seen how to copy paste from the clip and then pasting it into another clip. You've also seen how to copy paste into a track if you want to control each individual track. The third copy paste trick is being able to apply filters universally across the entire timeline, not just for a track, not just for a particular clip, but for the entire timeline. And that's copy pasting into the output, which sometimes people overlook and accidentally actually paste something on the output and errors happen and then they don't understand why filters are acting a certain way. They don't understand that they accidentally put it on the output and I'll show you that. So first and foremost, let's go back into this clip here. As you can see, there are two filters and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click this icon again, I'm gonna copy it so that it's on the clipboard and then I'm going to X out these two. And so now when you look at each one of the videos, again, there are no filters as you can see up here. Uh, let's check this last one here. And so this is the track and this is another track. And to apply it to this whole timeline, I can go into this thing here, which I, I didn't even know you can select, um, not until maybe six months ago. So you can actually select that can see there now that it's selected and you can paste 
and you can see here there's a prompt that says do you really want to add filters to the output uh, this prompt actually didn't used to exist um, it only they only added it because too many people were accidentally pasting something here and they didn't realize that some there's a filter there and it was applying it to the entire timeline and so they're wondering you know why are filters applied when I look at the individual videos there are no filters and when I look at the track there are no filters so for for those of you who've sometimes experienced errors on your timeline and uh, there's some kind of phantom filter out there that you don't know where it's applied you might have accidentally applied it to the output and you know that there's a filter on the output if you see this icon right here, which is the filter icon. So now I have pasted it into the output. And so when I play the video, you can see that the filter has been applied to this particular video. And then if we look at this one here, also applied to that video. When we look at this one here, also applied. And then last but not least, that one there. And so generally this technique is used when you want to apply a universal filter across all your clips. Um, like say you want to bump up the volume of your entire output. You would put that here or you want to do a, you know, a general LUT right you want to you know after you've done all your video editing you want to apply the LUT once everything's been balanced across the entire timeline you can apply it to this thing here which essentially applies the LUT to every single video of your entire timeline and this is really useful and and time saving because you can have 30 40 100 video clips in here um, you can easily do it on the track, of course, but here you apply it once and it applies to the entire timeline. So that's the third copy paste trick, which is once again, copy pasting into the output. Now this next one is not a tip, but a bit of good news. For the past versions of Shotcut, we were unable to copy filters from one timeline to another meaning that I can't copy these filters and open up another MLT file and paste it. So currently the clipboard only applies to the current open file you have. But starting in version 21.08, which is the version after this tutorial, you will now have the ability to copy paste across different MLT files. Now that is huge. Currently, the version is at the beta testing stage, but look out for it once it's released. So enough of the copy pasting. The next tip is making sure you use the filter presets that are available for every filter. If there are settings that you constantly reuse, it's best to save them as presets so that you have them available to you at all times. The first example I'm going to use is the text simple filter. And so let's once again go to the filter box here. Uh, I'm going to choose the plus icon and I'm going to type text. In a previous video I created, I actually saved a preset so that I can standardize my title text. In this example, since we've already created the text simple, all I have to do is go to the preset section and find a saved version of a previous formatting that I've already created called center text. And all of a sudden it centers everything. It brings up the font that I previously used. And all I have to do is go into the text box and change the title text into whatever I want it to be, right? So. like that, right? And so I can reuse this formatting over and over again because I've already saved it as a preset. And it's actually really easy to save a preset. All you have to do is go to the plus icon after you've formatted your text the way you want it to do. Um, you can even add all the keyframes and, and all these other settings that you wanna add in there. Once you've finished and you've, you've gotten it to the point 
that you think is perfect, all you have to do is click the plus icon, name it, let's say test preset, and then click OK. I'm not going to click OK because I don't want to save it on my preset, but all you have to do is click OK and you've essentially saved the preset. The other example I'm going to use is the gain volume filter. In many of my tutorials, I wanted to standardize the volume level of my videos. And so what I did was I saved a preset called voice default. And again, if you want to create your own preset for gain volume, all you have to do is set it to the level that you want to reuse over and over again. Let's say it's at 5.7, right? You click the plus icon, save it to voice level, and then click OK. And that should essentially save the preset for you so that next time you open Shotcut uh, and you're doing your editing, if you want to use that preset, you can use it over and over. And so that's a really simple tip in terms of being able to reuse and, and replicate previous work you've already done. Because that's what you want to do is you want to scale. Like if you spent a lot of time modifying or editing your timeline in a previous video and you want to be able to leverage that time and use it for future videos, I think using presets are the best ways to do it. Now this last tip is also a great way of leveraging previous work. And so in this one, I'm going to base this off an example that I've already shown you, which is tip number two and tip number three, which I already mentioned. Um, a lot of times I put my GoPro footage on one track and I put my Insta360 footage on another track like that, right? And so let's say in my GoPro footage, um, I've already loaded tons of uh, presets like color grading, right? So I've already set a color grade for, for this particular track. Um, and then I've also set, uh, let's say, blur. Right, again, we're just gonna put some random filters on there. And I might as well, since I'm here, I might as well copy it and paste it on this other track. And let's just pretend like this is a totally different set of filters that I apply on my Insta360 footage, right? So that's all well and good. Uh, so I've managed to make my work a little bit more efficient by leveraging filters on tracks. But what I can do is I can actually delete all the footage on these tracks. And then I can save this MLT file. Let's say uh, this is called camera template, right? So I'm saving that. And so what you can do is you can open this template and you can drag a brand new set of files on this template. And these tracks already have the filters loaded in them that you've used in previous videos, especially if you're just gonna reload clips from the same camera that you've used previously. And so that's another way of reusing these filters or groups of filters that's already been saved. So. Me personally, I probably have more than two dozen different MLT templates that I've saved, which includes um, my tutorial videos that already have the intro video and the outro video already preloaded. Um, it already has all the sound settings and all these and all these other things. So, you know, if you do have the opportunity and you want to leverage your previous work and you want to save time, save all your old MLT files that have all the, all the clips in it and then just delete all the, uh, all the clips in there and so that you can preserve all the filters that you've already applied. You can reuse 
the MLT file over and over again. And so that's the last tip. So hopefully all of these tips have been very helpful. Um, but I do have one more thing for you. By the time this tutorial is finished, I would have gotten almost 4,000 subscribers on this channel. This is amazing and I wouldn't have gotten here without every single one of you. Because of you, I've gotten some notoriety in the shortcut space, but I want to pay it forward. I want to help you gain exposure for your channels. I want to highlight videos of individuals who have used my tips and let the rest of my subscribers see your work. And I'm going to do this for every shortcut tutorial moving forward. So how can your video and channel be highlighted? All you have to do is share a link to your video on the comment and tell me which tip or trick you used. Please timestamp it so I can find it right away. This time, I'll start with a fellow shortcut user with the channel called Got to Get Outdoors. I believe his channel is focused on hiking and the outdoors. He used a wipe mask transition technique as an intro and he came out great. Here's his video. That was awesome. The next one I want to highlight is my buddy with a channel called Musical Box Bits and Pieces. He too has tons of shortcut related tutorials that will help you, so make sure you subscribe to his channel and tell him I sent you. There are tons of videos I could have chosen, but this time I'm going to highlight his end credit sequence that looks straight out of a major motion picture. It's kind of long, so I'll only play the first part. But once again, remember this was done on shortcut. If you want to see the rest, go check out his channel. I just wanted to remind you that if you haven't yet, go visit my channel. I'm sure you'll find tons of shortcut related videos. And don't forget to subscribe so that you know when I drop a new shortcut related tutorial. Every video on my channel was done on shortcut. So aside from examples of what shortcut can do, you can also visit my playlist of tips and tutorials, all geared toward the beginner. Visit my Shotcut Tips and Tricks playlist and learn all the tips and tricks I've learned during my journey toward video editing. So once again, please subscribe and I'll see you next time.